Good morning, my name is Benjamin Moeller. I'm a paleontologist and unauthorized Kirkland Signature brand ambassador. Today I'm joined by George, the dustiest puppy. And we're on day five of the Menifee Expedition. We're exploring a brand new section. It's been scouted beforehand um, on the off season. So we have a little bit of an idea of what's gonna be there, but for the most part, this is gonna be entirely new. So we're very excited to see what crops up. I've heard there's crock material there. That's what I'm particularly interested in. So uh, it should be a good day. And it's always a good day for George. Isn't that right? Here's a really interesting piece of petrified wood. Look at it in cross section. Look at all those foldings of the rings there. So I don't know as much about paleobotany as I wish, so I can't say anything really intelligent about this at the moment, but I just think it's really interesting how different the different kinds can look. And of course there's preservational reasons why maybe the growth rings here are standing out more, or this could just be a different thing entirely. So I'm looking forward to learning more. So here's some evidence of the croc material that we're looking for here. This bone might not look like much, but it's a very distinct piece that tells us of the presence of an animal called Dinosuchus, which is one of the largest crocodilomorphs to, uh, to ever walk the planet as far as we know. I'm going to zoom in really close so you can see those pits. So that's a key element that tells us not only that this is an osteoderm, which is a bone that sits in the skin, but also that it belongs to Dinosuchus specifically. So when you look at it in cross-section, you can see that it's very thick and inflated, and most croc osteoderms, including those of the other species that we find here, are not anywhere near that thick. And they also have very deep pitting. So this is, again, armoring, bone that sits in the skin. Um, but it also connects to the musculature of the animal itself. So each of these pits are attachment sites for muscle and ligament and tendon, to help a very large animal, we're talking about something that could be 30, maybe even 40 feet long, um, move around in this environment. So this may be a small piece, but it tells us about the presence of a very big animal. Here's another few pieces with those telltale pits. So we've got some nice bone in place right here that should be collected fairly quickly. And uh, on this end piece, noticing some interesting scratch patterns. So right there you can see two grooves, one right there and one right there, that run kind of parallel. Yeah, they do. So, of course, one of the things that we look for in bones is not just if we can identify what it is, but also traces of behavior. So same as with the shrimp burrows, you can study traces of behavior left in the bones themselves. And so teeth marks by scavenging reptiles and tiny mammals are very common features to find. And um, this is an interesting example. So we can kind of look at these grooves and maybe uh, back in a laboratory setting, take a guess as to what may have been gnawing on this, uh, on this bone right here. So study of that kind of thing, um, the process of uh, deformation caused by scavenging or predation or disease, um, that is known as pathology. And when we're looking at it in fossils, we call that paleopathology. So the last thing we're going to do in this area for today is jacket this interesting little dinosaur bone. Um, it's got some covering on it right now, but it's got a very interesting curve. And there's a crest coming off on this side. This is a loose end piece that was found nearby, um, possibly from the same uh, specimen, but possibly from something else. Um, you can see it's a pretty substantial uh, little chunk of condyle right here, and then the shaft will continue off in this direction. So since uh, I haven't shown kind of the jacketing process yet this year, um, 
basically the way that we safely collect dinosaur fossils, and all of our fossils actually, is by um, initially covering it up with something soft that can help cushion it between, um, you know, the, obviously the outside world, but also between um, the bone and the plaster jacket that is going to be going around on the outside. It's made out of gypsum, and uh, we don't want that touching the fossil directly. And what uh, these guys are doing right now is taking the rock down on the sides, and we call it pedestaling, um, taking the level down so that we get a nice lip and so that uh, we can undercut it eventually. So there's going to be a nice rigid plaster cap put on top of this, and then we want as much distance between the bone and our tools when we eventually undercut it and then flip it. Jacket is flipped, so it is now upside down. The bone is down here, and this was what was underneath. So we're gonna clean that up, put some extra glue just to be safe, and uh, take it home with us. Down the middle. Yep. This guy is ready to go, and we'll brush. We are ready to call it job well done.